Welcome back to Hackcode. In this video, we'll dive into relationship concept in binary search trees, finding the lowest common ancestor. We'll explore two different approaches to solve this problem. First is because your approach and then iterative approach. This topic is crucial for coding interviews and helps in understanding the structure and properties of the BSTs better. Let's dive in. So, given a binary search tree, find the lowest common ancestor that is LCA node of two given nodes in the binary search tree. The lowest common ancestor is defined between the two nodes P and Q as the lowest node that has both P and Q as dissonance, where we allow a node to be descendant of itself. So simple, right? We need to find a LCA. So here the condition is like we can allow a node to be descendant of itself. This is the main thing here. So let's look at examples. In example one, we see that P is close to and Q is close to. It. So by observing the tree, we see that uh, six is a node that contains the two and eight, right? So here six is a LCA. Let's look at an example to here. So we see that P is close to Q is close to four. So here, uh, uh, since we can allow the node to be descendant of itself, two contains four here. So two is the LCA. So in example three, we see that two, uh, root is equal to two comma one and p is equal to q is equal to one. So obviously, the LCA is two because two contains two as well and uh, one. So the constraints here, the number of nodes in the tree is in the inclusive range of two to ten power five, and the node value is in the inclusive range of minus ten power nine to ten power nine. So all node values are unique and p not equal to q obviously right because node values are unique so p won't be equal to q and then p and q will exist in the BST. This is the most important constraint. So so let's look into the approaches. The first is equals to solution. So the base case is here is uh, the root is none, we return none. So if both p and q are smaller than the root's value, the LCA lies in the left subtree. So recur for the left shell. So if both P and Q are greater than the root's value, the LCA lies in the right subtree. So we recur for the right shell. So if not one value is on the left and the other is on the right, then the root is the LCA. So let's look into the flowchart now. So first we check right if the root is none, uh, if yes, we return none. Uh, if no, we just check if both P and Q values lies uh, less than the root's value. So if yes, uh, we just recur for the left subtree. Um, because we know right uh, if they are less than then obviously they should be lying in the left shell tree so if no uh, we check like if both uh, p value and q value greater than root value then uh, we just recur in the right subtree because we know that from the properties of bst this will definitely rise in the right subtree right so that's right if no then we return the root because this would be uh, like the case where this is the root and this is the p and q so uh, here root is the lca that's why we return uh, root so let's look in the dry run for this approach so here uh, we have we have to find the lca of 2 and 8 uh, from the Three, we can see that the LCA is six. How? Like first we start uh, with the recursive approach at the root uh, root. So so first we start at the root. That is six, right? So since two is less than six and eight is greater than six, uh, six is the LCA. Let's look into the code. So here, uh, as we discussed, we just check if the root is none, we return none. And then this is the case we check where the P and Q are smaller than the root. Uh, then uh, we know that LCA uh, lies in the left uh, tree. So we just recover for the left tree. So that's what we're doing here. So we're checking if the root value uh, greater than the P dot value and the root value greater than the Q dot value. So that means that we have to just return the left sub tree. So we're just uh, returning the root dot left here and P comma Q uh, in this recursive function. And then uh, we will check in the other case where of P and Q greater than the root. And we know that uh, this, if this is the case, the LCA lies in the right subtree. So this is just the uh, same implementation here. So we just having the checking. Uh, so we just checking if root value is less than the P value here, and then root value less than the Q value here. And then if it's the case, then we just request the right subtree uh, with the P and Q values passed. And then uh, if this is not the case, then we know that the root is the LCA, so we return root. So here, let's look into the complexities. The, so time complexity is O of H. Here, because the function LC it traverses the tree root to the lowest common ancestor. In the worst case, it traverses the height of the tree, so which is H. So for a balanced BST, the height is approximately log n. So where n is the number of nodes in the tree. However, for a skewed tree, height can be uh, as large as n because tree because uh, it could be only having the left nodes or right nodes. That's why. So space complexity is O of H here. The space complexity is determined by the depth of the recursion stack. In the worst case, the depth of the recursion stack can be equal to the height of the tree H. So that's the space complexity is O of H. For the balanced tree, this is O of log n. Uh, and for the skewed tree, this could be a of n. So let's look into the approach two, uh, which is the iterative approach. So so we just start with initializing a, a variable root pointing to the current node, and then we loop while the root is not none. 
and then we check if both p and q are smaller than the roots value we move to the left shell so next is we check if both p and q are greater than the roots value we move to the right shell and then we check if one value is on the left and other value is in the right so if this is the case we know that uh, root is lca so we break the loop and it in the root so let's look into the flow chart so we just initialize the root variable here and then we check if the root is none uh, if yes we just return none and then if no we check if both p value and q value are less than the roots value if as yes, we move to the left shell if no we check if p value and q value are greater than the roots value if this is the case then we move to the right shell if no we break the loop and then return the root so let's look into the try run uh, here uh, we had to find lc of 2 comma 8 uh, so here first we just started the root which is 6 so since 2 is less than 6 and the 8 is greater than 6 we, we find that 6 is lc right because this is the third case we hit so let's look in the code here so we just iterate till we have the root is not none so and first case we are checking here is if both p and q are smaller than the root uh, if s then lc lies in the left so we just have the same check here we are checking if the root value uh, is greater than the p value and the root value is greater than the q value uh, so in this case we update root is equal to root dot left because we need to explore the left subtree for the lca and then uh, the other case is we check if the uh, root value is less than the p value and root value is less than the q value this is because uh, if both uh, p and q are greater than the root this means that lca lies in the right subtree so we have to explore the right subtree that's why we keep the root is equal to root dot right so uh, if this is not the case then we break out of the loop because we have the root is lca this is a case where uh, we have one node in the left and one node in the right and the root is the lca so let's look into the complexities here the time complexity is o of h uh, this is similar to the recursive approach the function lca um, trait u traverses the tree from the root to the L, uh, lowest common ancestor in our case it traverses the height of the tree which is h uh, so this is o log n for uh, a balanced tree and o of n for skew tree so the space complexities are of one uh, this is because it doesn't have an additional space that goes with the input size it only uses the variables for the current node and the target values so demo and conclusion so i've got the code ready here uh, let's try submitting each of the approaches so first we are submitting aggressive approach so this is accept resolution now we are submitting an iterative approach So yeah, this helps accept solution. So conclusion, both approaches recursive and iterative efficiently find the LCA in a given BST. The recursive approach is more intuitive and easier to implement for those familiar with recursion, while the iterative approach might be preferred in environments where the, uh, with limited stack memory. Mastering these techniques is essential for solving various BST related problems in coding interviews and practical applications. Thank you for tuning in your episode of Hack Code. If you found this video helpful, be sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel for more coding tutorials and problem solving tips. If you have any questions or any more topics, feel free to leave them in the comments below. Until next time, have a good day.